This video is going to look at two more examples of our optimization problems. Our first example says we have a rectangular solid with a square base, has a surface area of 337.5 square centimeters, and we want to find the dimensions that will result in a solid with a maximum volume. So we want to maximize the volume. So we have a rectangular solid, and that means we're looking at some type of a solid like this. And we want to maximize the volume of this. Well, the volume here is going to be equal to the length, the width, and the height. Now the key word is they tell us we have a square base. So that tells us down here that the length and the width would be the same. So we can label that as both being equal to x. It's going to be a square base. Then we could label the height as y. So we know we're going to have a square base and then we have some height of y. Now what are we talking about when we say we want to find the surface area or that it has a surface area? Well the surface area is the area of all the surface of our box here. So how many sides do we have? Well we have all the way around we have four sides and then we have the top and bottom so we have six sides. Now if we have a square base, that means that all the way around the base here would be x. Well, if the base is square, then that also means what? That means that the top must also be square. So again, we would have up here an x by x square. Okay. So how can we come up with the volume to be maximized? Well, that's going to require us to use a secondary equation. So our primary equation is the volume because that's what we want to maximize. So the secondary equation would be this surface area. Okay, so the surface area we know is 337. 0.5. So then I'm going to say S is going to be our surface area. Well, we have the bottom part, which would be x times x. That gives us the area of the bottom square. So that would be x squared. And then we have the top, and the area for the top would be x times x. So that would be 1x squared plus 1x squared. So we could simply write that as 2x squared. So that's going to give us the area for the bottom and the top. So now we have all four sides going around. So we need to add the four sides that go around. So we have the one on the left, the one on the front, then the right side, and then on the back side. Well, what's going to be the area of one of these? Well, you have the x on the bottom, the y is going up as the height. So here, you're going to end up with x times y to give you the area. But now we have four of them, so that would be four times xy. And we know that's going to actually be equal to 337.5. So now, over here we have the primary equation. Volume is equal to LWH. Well, over here we could plug in x times x would be x squared, and then the height would be y, so x squared times y. So we're down to two variables. But now we need to eliminate either the x or the y. So the question becomes, if we look at the secondary equation, 
what's going to be easier to solve for? Is it going to be easier to solve for the X or the Y? Now, once again, uh, typically it doesn't matter, but in this case, it's going to be a lot easier if we solve this equation for our Y because we only have one variable. So if we solve for the Y, there's only one variable Y. So 4XY is equal to 337.5 minus our 2X squared. And then we can divide the 4X away. So Y is equal to 337.5 minus 2X squared, all divided by the 4XY. I'm sorry, the 4X. So now that we have our y, we can take all of this and substitute in for y. So the primary equation now becomes volume equals x squared multiplied by the 337.5 minus 2x squared over 4x and if we go through and we simplify this a little bit because you know our goal is we need to eventually take the derivative but before we do that let's simplify this some and we can simplify this by distributing our x or first of all we have x squared over 4x so what's going to happen here is we have an x this x on the bottom will cancel out the square so now we're left with multiplying x times 337.5 so we would have that divided by the 4 so 337.5 divided by 4 we're going to end up with 84.375 times the x and then we have our x times the x squared which would be x cubed and we have the 2 over 4 which reduces to 1 half so we would have 1 half x cubed okay so now we're at a point where we can easily take the derivative so if we take the derivative here uh, we're simply going to have 84.375 and then 3 halves uh, 3 times a half we would have 3 halves times x squared and to find the critical numbers we're going to set this equal to zero and solve for x so we would have 84.375 move over the x squared so we get a positive three halves x squared and we're going to divide away the three halves or we could multiply by the reciprocal so either way here you're going to get 84.375 uh, multiply that by two-thirds and I believe we're going to get 56.25 and then if we take the square root of 56.25 we get 7.5 so there's the critical number so that tells us that is most likely going to be our value for X so that we can maximize our volume now once again we need to verify this so in order to verify this we need to find the second derivative and up here the 84 is going to go to 0 and we're going to have 2 times negative 3 halves so the 2's cancel so you're going to be left with a negative 3x so when x is equal to seven and a half that tells us that when we plug that in the second derivative is going to be equal to a negative which means our graph will concave down and once again that verifies the x value is going to give us a maximum point okay so we know the x value is seven and a half so how do we find the y value we can simply take our x and plug it in up here to the secondary equation and if we solve that for y 
And if we plug it in, you can just take my word for it. If you enter this into the calculator, your Y value is also going to be seven and a half. So that tells us for our box here, our box is actually going to be a cube. So that tells us our length is equal to seven and a half and our units was centimeters. The width is seven and a half centimeters and the height is seven and a half centimeters. So that would be the dimensions of our box that would maximize the volume. And of course, if we wanted to find the volume, we would just take our 7.5 and cube that. So in other words, the volume then would be 7.5 cubed, which would end up equaling 421.875. Cubic centimeters. So here's our dimensions, and here is the actual volume. So hopefully by now you're starting to get to the hang of maximizing and minimizing uh, with these optimization problems. One last example we have a rectangle is bounded by the x and y axes. So down here you can see here's our rectangle. It's uh, We have the y-axis and the x-axis. And then it's also bound by the graph y equals 6 minus x over 2. So there's our straight line. So if we notice our rectangle is confined basically to this area here with the x-axis, the y-axis, and the line y equals 6 minus x over 2. And the question is, what length and width should the rectangle have so that its area is maximized? So we want to maximize the area of this rectangle, and we want to know what is the length and the width. Well, here, this would be your x and your y. Well, that's going to really be this point here, x, y. So we want to know what is the X coordinate and the Y coordinate for this point, and that would give us what's going to maximize the area. So, in other words, this point could be up here. So, if the point was up here, then our rectangle would look like this. So, the question is which location is going to give us the rectangle with the maximum area? All right, so once again, to do that, we know that the formula for area for a rectangle is length times width. So in our diagram here, we could think of that as x times y. Now, we have two variables, so that means we need a secondary equation. And we're in luck here. They actually give us the secondary equation. That's the equation of the line y equals 6 minus x over 2 and if it's easier uh, we can actually think of this as 2 into 6 to make it 3 minus uh, x over 2 okay so we if we divide each one by 2 so over here we can plug all of this in for y so area equals to x times y which is 3 minus x over 2 and we can distribute the x and we would get 3x minus and I'm actually going to write this as 1 half x times x is x squared so this one's pretty easy because they already give us that secondary equation we just have to substitute it into the primary and now we have area in terms of one variable x so of course we need to find the derivative so we can find the critical numbers so we would have three minus two times a half so that's just going to be minus one x to the first and if we take and set this equal to zero we end up with 
x equals 3. So that tells us that over here, when x is equal to 3, that's going to be our maximum area. Now, are we completely done? And hopefully you said no, because we need to actually verify that this is going to give us a maximum point. So that means we're going to take the second derivative, and the second derivative here would simply be negative 1. And this should be obvious. When x is equal to 3, what do we know about the second derivative? The second derivative is going to be negative. And once again, it's a negative 1. It's always going to be negative. So that means in this case, it's going to be concave down. And if our graph is concave down, therefore we know we have our maximum point. So we know our maximum value for x over here is 3. And if we want to find the y value, all we have to do is plug this into our equation up here and we would end up with 3 minus 3 halves and our y value then would be equal to three halves, or you could write that as one and a half. So over here, our y value then is one and a half. So that tells us if we go over three on the x-axis and up one and a half, that's going to be our coordinate. So the dimensions of our rectangle would be three by one and a half. And that would give us the maximum area.